Hello all, welcome to this session. Today I'm going to cover Kubernetes at the edge in Telcos. My name is Abhinav Vesh Chen. I'm 5G Edge architect working in Wipro. Some more details about me. I'm distinguished member of technical staff. I'm open source contributor. I'm an author, blogger, and frequent speaker. Here is the agenda for today. I'm going to start with uh, edge computing. And uh, so this part is basically uh, to give a brief overview of edge computing for people who are not aware of it. And then uh, followed by that, I will cover telco edge overview. And then why Kubernetes is suitable for telco edge. And then I will list down all the requirements that telco have from edge platform. And then we will do a mapping of those requirements with Kubernetes and Kubernetes ecosystem products, right? To see the fitment. And then I will show one uh, telco reference architecture. And uh, towards the end, we will see on the CNCF focus item around this, telcos and Kubernetes. And then we will conclude this. Okay, so let's get started. So what is edge computing? Edge computing is uh, all about bringing cloud capabilities to the edge. So it's like uh, you bring your compute network storage uh, at the edge, right? Rather than running things from your data center or from your cloud, which is again centralized kind of thing. Now, edge computing is not uh, a replacement for cloud computing. It is rather going to be a complementary, right? And uh, edge computing will be useful for low latency uh, requirement related application and application which require real time uh, processing, okay? There could be several possible use cases. And in the beginning, uh, we expect that uh, cloud gaming and high quality video delivery will be the early adopters. Okay, from edge computing market perspective, uh, as per LF Edge State of the Edge report, I have given the link here in this slide so you can uh, see the detail. Uh, this global edge computing infra market will be $800 billion by 2028, right? So there is huge potential in this and a lot of work happening in this area. Okay, uh, on the right side of this screen, you see uh, there is a prediction from Gartner that was done in 2018, uh, where Gartner said that 75% uh, of enterprise generated data will be created and processed at the edge, right? By 2025. Now, what is Telco Edge? So in telco world, uh, edge computing is commonly referred as uh, mobile edge computing or multi-access edge computing, which is new name of uh, mobile edge computing. And uh, there is a, a standards body called ETSI, European Telecommunications Standard Institute. So ETSI has defined uh, MEC reference architecture, and also they have come up with several MEC APIs. Okay, so you can have a look at uh, at C reference architecture and other details. Now, uh, this Telco Edge is also known as Service Provider Edge, right? Here, uh, Edge location is within the Telco network. So, Telco Edge is primarily Edge, which is within control of Telcos, right? And it could be near Edge or far Edge. So, when we say near Edge, it is uh, near to the core data center of telco right and far edge is opposite of it so it could be as far as customer premise itself right? and this edge computing or the mec is uh, related to 5g in fact uh, mec is going to be an absolutely necessary component for achieving 5g capability around your llc which is ultra reliable low latency communication, right? So 5G has three main capabilities. One is URLLC, other one is EMBB, Enhanced Mobile Broadband, and third one is MMTC, Massive Machine Type Communication, right? 
Okay, so why Kubernetes is suitable for Telco Edge? Number one, scalability, right? So uh, since Edge deployment will not be like eight or 10, uh, the typical data center deployment, they will be in thousands. Right? So uh, we need a solution which is scalable, right? Uh, where we can do deployment in thousands and thousands of sites, right? And which can scale according to the need. So let's say uh, if one particular 5G core component needs to be scaled up, it should be easily possible, right? Then uh, second suitability parameter is agility. So Kubernetes supports various application types, right? So you can run, let's say, AIML workload using Kubeflow. You can run serverless using Knative and so on. Now, uh, Kubernetes is a container orchestration system. So it has very good orchestration and lifecycle management capabilities. And the key feature of Kubernetes is that it has portability across uh, hybrid multi-edge cloud. So this feature helps in uh, doing workload migration from one edge site to other edge site, right? Which could be in public cloud or which could be in another edge location, on-premise edge location. Okay, and uh, then Kubernetes also give a consistent user experience. It provides site resiliency by using the portability. Then it is also aligned to 5G core component, right? Let's say uh, UPF can be placed uh, closer to the consumer, right? And other components also. And uh, Kubernetes is also aligned to open RAM and uh, cloud native nature of 5G. Right. So uh, there were major difference between 4G and 5G. That 5G was uh, 5G rather is cloud is following cloud native architecture. Right? And Kubernetes is synonym to cloud native architecture. So if something is compatible with Kubernetes, then it is assumed to be compatible with uh, cloud native. Now let's see what are the key requirements of Telco and how does uh, Kubernetes and its ecosystem map to these requirements. So uh, tel various telco companies have so many requirements and have classified those requirements into four areas. One is application area, right? So from application perspective, what I mean to say is that uh, uh, whatever is the edge platform, that platform should be capable of uh, hosting various types of applications. It could be AI application, IoT application, serverless application, and there should be some edge application lifecycle management uh, option also. Right from network function hosting perspective, uh, telcos are looking for a platform that uh, helps in hosting CNFs, which is cloud native network functions, and VNFs also, which is virtual network function, right? Which are running on VMs. Right. So, and for private network, uh, they are looking for VNF or CNF based hosting. Right. And since telco workloads are very network intensive, there are very specific features which are required, like huge base support or SRIOV support, even multi interface support, real time kernel support, CPU pinning, NUMA support, uh, PTP support. There are many more actually. Right, so uh, these are the technical features which are required in the platform. Right? And from use case perspective, uh, use cases could be related to cloud gaming, related to video analytics, related to IoT Edge, and so on. So now let's see. So how these things are mapped. So many things are supported as is. Let's say huge base support, SRIO support. This is already there in Kubernetes, and few things we can. Uh, implement using related products projects right like kubeflow can be used for implementing ai at the edge or knative can be used for serverless similarly kubert can be used for vnf hosting right and uh, for tiny edge or iot edge we can use uh, kubernetes distributions like uh, k3s cube edge micro k8s these are very small uh, small footprint based uh, distributions.
Okay, so moving to reference architecture. So, uh, I mean, from previous slides, it is clear that uh, we we need Kubernetes to run uh, telco edge kind of workload. But now, how? I mean, what is the reference architecture? How do we uh, structure these component? Right. So this is one of the sample reference architecture that I have taken from uh, Acrino, where I'm also one of the active members. So uh, in Acrino, uh, KNI Blueprint, which is Kubernetes Native Infra Blueprint, uh, the architecture is that at the bottom of it, you have a, a bare metal server, you have virtual machines, you have a public cloud based uh, machines like uh, AWS EC2 instances, right? And on top of it, you are running either uh, operating system like CoreOS, which is uh, very suitable for container related workload, or you might be running some real time kernel like CentOS RT, right? And uh, then on top of it, you are running some software defined storage like Chef, and you have uh, multi network interface supported. Uh, uh, option like Multus or Cryo for container runtime, and then you run OKD, right? Uh, which is uh, uh, open source Kubernetes distribution, which is OpenShift uh, open source version, right? And uh, on top of uh, this Kubernetes, you run Kubert, you run uh, various virtual machine based workload, or you run container based workload directly as MEC apps and all. Right? So this is one of the reference architecture. Uh, you can also refer to uh, MEC reference architecture given by Etsy, right? Uh, that very nicely explains how these components should be assigned, what is the uh, role of each of those component and so on. Right? So it's a recommended architecture and many companies follow that in fact, right? And now this is one of the reference architecture and there could be several different possible reference architecture, right? So nowadays various vendors have also started giving their edge reference architecture, like AWS has given one and let's say VMware has given one and so on, right? So, uh, but more or less components will be like this only, right? Okay, now let's see what, what is the focus of CNCF or what CNCF is doing in this area, right? So CNCF objective is that they want to uh, do best utilization of Kubernetes features by telco operators and these developers who are working on cl uh, cloud native network function, right? So for that, there is a telecom user group I have given the link also if you are interested to join that group or want to get more detail. So there is a telecom uh, user group uh, which is doing several things, including they have CNF testbed also, and there is a CNF working group, networking, spatial interest group, right? So a uh, lot of activities are happening, and CNF testbed is a very good initiative where one can test their CNF on Kubernetes. And they also have uh, OpenStack based uh, environment where they can compare that with uh, uh, corresponding VNF, right? And do the benchmarking in terms of performance and in terms of other parameters. Now, there are a few projects like uh, Network uh, Service Mess, right? Which is running to handle this kind of uh, requirement of telcos. Then there is Qbert project. I've already covered about Qbert. Then there is Linux Foundation Edge project, right? This LF Edge is a dedicated project for uh, edge computing. And there are so many edge stack uh, related to telcos. So you can have a look. And Acrino Edge stack is one of the project of LF Edge out of six or seven projects. And Acrino has at least uh, 20 different blueprints for different, different use cases. So yeah, there is a huge amount of work happening. Now, in terms of current challenges, so is Kubernetes all geared up and ready for Telco Edge? Uh, probably not, not 100%. So there are some of the challenges which are listed here. Number one, DNF hosting on Kubernetes is still a challenge because uh, uh, Qbert 
is uh, uh, getting matured at very fast pace. Probably it will be ready in next few months or so. But uh, right now it is not ready for uh, BNF uh, hosting for getting telco grade performance. Right. So that is one area. Second is multi cluster management. So as you know that uh, edge deployment will be running in thousands. So we need a multi cluster management solution. Right. From where we can have a, a single pane of glass of everything that is happening uh, in my let's say hybrid multi edge cloud right there are several open source projects which are uh, trying to cover this scope and there are vendor specific uh, solutions like uh, aws has eks anywhere or google has anthos and then uh, Azure Arc is another solution. So yeah, I mean, vendors are uh, coming up with such solution. I think Red Hat also has advanced cluster manager ACM solution. Okay, so uh, next challenge is automated Kubernetes cluster provisioning. So this is very much required because when you are dealing with a large scale, you need one click deployment of not only Kubernetes, but uh, all the things which are required alongside Kubernetes, right? So uh, you need, let's say, uh, various operator to be deployed automatically, which are required, let's say, chef rook operator or something else, right? So that uh, after that, uh, your cluster is up and running without any manual intervention. So that is required. Then uh, another feature which is uh, required is Kubernetes cluster level DR. Now, uh, what I mean by cluster level DR is when, let's say I'm having one Kubernetes cluster at edge site one, and another cluster at edge site two, and my edge site goes down, how do I move all the workload from edge site one to edge site two, right? So that kind of DR option is required. Uh, Kubernetes as such is not built with that kind of architecture in mind, right? It is always single cluster kind of architecture, but we can achieve this kind of, uh, uh, functionality by using various storage solution like with sync replication, async replication at the storage layer, but those are uh, quite challenging to implement, right? So, and migration in such cases is not very straightforward and easy. Even uh, some of the best storage uh, container native storage vendor are still. Uh, figuring out the way to provide uh, seamless migration from one cluster to other cluster, right? Okay, so the last two challenges, one is VNF to CNF conversion is quite challenging and uh, deployment complexity is also very high. The key takeaways here, uh, telcos are becoming software defined. Earlier, they were uh, very much appliance centric and all. And not only telcos, but even the OEMs are also becoming software defined. And telcos are ready, getting ready for playing bigger role, right? And cloud, Kubernetes, open source, these are going to be essential technological components in uh, telcos journey, right? Uh, edge native applications are also being built and edge native application, will be built on top of Kubernetes. And uh, so, so far we were talking about edge, uh, edge uh, and Kubernetes, but Kubernetes role is not limited to edge. In fact, uh, Kubernetes is also used by leading 5G core vendors uh, and they are using it for 5G core and uh, various RAN vendors are also using Kubernetes for providing uh, open RAN and so on, right? So Kubernetes is coming in big way in uh, telco landscape. So that's uh, message here. So with that, we have reached a question session. So if you have any question, you can type it in the chat box and uh, I'll answer. And if not, then uh, we have reached towards the end of the session. So thank you very much for attending this. Thank you.